Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless on wednesday the senate armed services subcommittee on emerging threats and capabilities heard highly anticipated testimony from pentagon officials about a phenomenon that has been a source of public intrigue for generations unidentified flying objects. There were no photographs of flying saucers or extraterrestrials hauled in as witnesses, but the Department of Defense did say it is reviewing hundreds of incidents of pilots coming across something in the sky they just could not account for. So how does the government explain those UFOs and is there other life out there? For generations, our fascination with UFOs and aliens have fueled hit TV shows like X-Files, iconic films, ET phone home, and comedy sketches. They were uh, gray with big fat eyes, little mouths. But for some real life pilots, it's not a satellite, it's not a meteor. Mysterious objects they've recently spotted in the skies are proving that truth is stranger than fiction. There's nothing that flies that high. So the odds of it being a military aircraft doing high G loads like that, it's impossible. It's either artificial or Biological. A Pew Research Center survey shows two thirds of Americans believe intelligent life exists on other planets, and more unexplainable sightings are adding to the growing push for answers from the U.S. government. We cannot keep turning a blind eye to surveillance data that is critical to detecting and tracking UAP. This week on Capitol Hill, the top Pentagon official reviewing unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAP, says they're investigating roughly 650 cases. That's up from more than 500 reported at the beginning of the year. The majority of unidentified objects reported to Aero demonstrate mundane characteristics of balloons, unmanned aerial systems, clutter, natural phenomena, or other readily explainable sources. Oh, splash, splash. And so far, no proof any of them are aliens. But with the team of researchers, Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb is leading on science to dig deeper. Even if we have a million fuzzy images from cell phone cameras, they're not equivalent to one crisp image with high resolution from a well-calibrated scientific instrument. Loeb is planning an expedition to Papua New Guinea this summer to search for what he thinks may be an interstellar object that crashed down there in 2014. Finding evidence for extraterrestrial technologies uh, could provide us with a glimpse at our technological future because that would be the biggest discovery that humanity ever made if we happen not to be alone in our cosmic neighborhood. And even if space aliens aren't coming to us, we're taking big steps to rocket into outer space ourselves. <laughs> SpaceX pushing the limits this week, launching its most powerful rocket ever built. Except shortly after liftoff, the uncrewed craft exploded. Starship just experienced what we call a rapid unscheduled disassembly. SpaceX founder Elon Musk still calling it a success. And Kathy joins me now from New York. Kathy, good morning. So clearly from these hearings, the Pentagon is taking UFOs seriously. So how will the government continue to track them? Hey, Willie, good morning to you. Yeah, NASA is also exploring the solar system and beyond, looking for extraterrestrial life. With the renewed interest in UAPs last year, NASA commissioned an independent study largely focused on aerial phenomena. The goal is to come up with ways to inform the agency on what data can be collected in the future from both government and civilian entities in order to shed light on these UAPs and whether any could be an issue for national security or air safety. The study is expected to wrap up midsummer and will be released to the public. CBS's David Martin reports newly declassified video shows one flying object that has experts baffled. An American military drone conducting surveillance in the Middle East. Suddenly, an unidentified object zips in and out of frame. Slow it down, and it appears to be a metallic sphere. But where it came from and what it was doing remain a mystery to the Pentagon. One of many. 
we are tracking over a total of 650 cases. The head of the Pentagon office investigating UFOs told a Senate subcommittee the sightings are concentrated off the east and west coast of the U.S., in the Middle East, and the South China Sea. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the the Pentagon says there is still no credible evidence any of the unidentified objects came from outer space. What would you say if I were to say, and I'm going to say, I don't believe in aliens, I don't believe hmm. in UFOs because I am a Christian and human beings are unique in this galaxy and this universe. I like to gotcha. believe <laughs> in the possibility of alien life so we can make new friends and new partners in the future. Not mentioned in the Bible. Could an alien deception be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Recently, interest has been rising in the theory that an alien deception will be part of the end times. Odd as it may seem, this theory is entirely plausible from a Christian perspective. Although the Bible gives us no word about whether or not aliens exist, there is no inclusion of them in the creation account in Genesis, and no mention of them elsewhere. The Bible does tell us about visitors from another world, the spiritual world, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Could this phenomenon be the strong delusion of the last days that is talked about in the Bible? 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12 The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly. Just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them, because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I do not delight. Christians must deal with this from a biblical worldview, not be caught up in the deception that UFOs are anything but agents of the prince of the power of the air, aka Satan. The rapture is a familiar concept to most Christians and non-Christians alike. While they may not believe it, and they may even laugh at it, many non-Christians know that all the Christians believe that they are supposed to somehow disappear before the end of the world. Satan would seem to have a problem. How would he be able to explain away the fact that every person who was a Christian has suddenly disappeared? It would seem like a huge wake-up call to the world that the Christians were right after all. It is becoming more and more clear what Satan's solution to this dilemma is. He will answer this preposterous idea, the rapture, with another preposterous idea, an alien deception. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18 tells Christians they will disappear from the earth someday. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Something strange is happening in my beloved home state of Texas, where someone or something is mutilating cattle. Three different counties, six cows have been found dead, with each scene more grisly than the next. They don't make sense. The cow's tongues have been cut out, uh, almost surgically. There's almost no signs of spilled blood. And nearly two of them, of the cows, had their sex organs removed. Authorities say they were unable to find any sign of footprints or tire tracks around the scenes. On top of that, the areas around the carcasses were undisturbed, like no signs of a struggle for the cows. And as troubling as all this is, stories like this have been happening actually for decades. As far back as the 1970s, the New York Times was reporting that nearly 200 cows in 11 states were found mysteriously mutilated, where ranchers reported that udders, eyes, ears, sex organs, and tongues seem to have been removed. So who is behind this seemingly 40 years of unexplained phenomenon? I don't know. Teenagers who play sick pranks on cattle ranchers? cultish worshipers of some odd religion, aliens. What could this be? This is so odd, we have to consider any possibility. In just the last few days, the Department of Defense has released new footage of a new UFO, footage in the Middle East. Could they have just been looking for more cows? 
The Pentagon has no explanation for what this was, just like authorities have no idea what has happened to all of those cows. It might sound crazy, but not out of the question. What is going on? Not just here, but maybe in the universe. It's the truth out there. UFO Seekers lead investigator Tim Doyle joins me now. Tim, what is going on? Well, something's strange, and in fact, it's been happening in Texas for a long time. Here's a picture of a Texas Tech student who actually had his car shut off by a UFO object, and you're seeing the sheriff participating in this. But cattle mutilations have been going on in depth since the 70s. There was a New Mexico state police officer who investigated up to 90 cattle mutilations in New Mexico. In one of those cases from 1976, Gabe Valdez, the police officer, found evidence of a triangular shaped object landing near a cow, then some type of tripods exiting this craft. And these tripods were anywhere from 28 inches to four inches in length. Gabe said in his investigation that these tripods that exited this UFO craft followed the cow for 600 feet before the cow finally fell dead. But here's the thing, it's usually the simplest explanation. Acknowledging that these things have been happening for quite some time, has the simplest explanation ever actually turned out? This has to have been investigated. Has it ever been cults or kids? Has it ever been the simplest explanation? No, not cult or kids, because even in that New Mexico case load, which the FBI investigated and the FBI said it was just natural predators, uh, Mr. Valdez, the police officer, said that the surgical cuts in which, get this, Will, even then the rectum and the genitalia were removed from the cattle the same way they are uh, now. And it just so happens uh, 66 years ago is when that poly or that Texas Tech student had his car shut off. So is there yeah. some weird uh, force that's like returning? But you're, you're right. I mean, if it's predators, if it's kids, if it's cults, there would be a mess. It's not and predators. This is it's not too predators. surgical. What will you do if it is reported that these UFOs are extraterrestrial? Will it shake your faith? If a UFO lands and these extraterrestrials who are fallen angels claim to be our creators, Will you believe the sly? Stay strong in the faith, brothers and sisters. This could be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving world. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Israel will likely face a multi-front military escalation in the near future. That's the word from Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, who said it's likely that Israel will face several threats simultaneously rather than single fronts as it has in the past. And the reason for this? Iran. ILTV's Steve Leibovitch reports. Briefing reporters, Defense Minister Gallant said that Israel's enemies are becoming bolder on several fronts simultaneously. According to the defense minister, future conflicts will likely be on several fronts rather than one at a time. Gallant said that Israel will have to change its view that limited conflicts can be managed. The comment followed the security escalation earlier this month that saw rocket fire from the Gaza Strip, a barrage of rockets from Lebanon, and a rocket attack from Syria, all within a matter of days. In each case, the IDF responded. The attacks also followed deadly terror attacks in Israel and Judea and Samaria. The shellings were allegedly in response to clashes between police and Palestinian rioters at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Gallant said that Iran is the driving force behind coordinated escalations. The Iranians transfer resources, ideology, knowledge and training of Palestinian terror groups in Gaza, Lebanon and Syria. According to Gallant, Iran funds Hezbollah terror group in Lebanon with strategic, precision-guided weapons and $700 million a year. Hamas terrorists in the Gaza Strip receive $100 million annually, with a smaller amount to the Islamic Jihad. In Syria, hundreds of millions of dollars are sent to Iranian-backed militias each year. Relating to the Iranian nuclear program, Gallant said, Iran is closer than ever 
to reaching military nuclear capability. The defense minister said that Israel's response must be in one of two ways, military action or a credible military threat. He noted Israeli airstrikes against Iranian entrenchment in Syria and the damage done to Iranian assets and capabilities in the region. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. Now we turn overseas to the African country of Sudan, where thousands of Americans and other foreigners are still hoping to escape fierce fighting that has killed hundreds of people. They're trying to get out of the country during a shaky 72-hour ceasefire that took effect overnight. NTS Tayyip reports on the dangerous situation. The latest Saudi and U.S. brokered ceasefire looks much like this failed attempt before it, making it clear Sudan's warring generals have no intention of laying down arms. Near constant gunfire continues to echo across the Sudanese capital, and heavily armed fighter jets can be seen streaking low across the Khartoum skyline as civilians, including several thousand foreign nationals, remain caught in the crossfire. Like Amr Osman, who's from Scotland. Here's a bus. He shows us the bus he and his family are considering boarding to Egypt, a 13-hour journey through dangerous terrain. Are you not worried about putting your family on this bus and driving all those many hundreds of miles to the border? I'm worried, but... I think I'll be more worried if I stay. For more than a week, Sudan's army chief, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, has been battling for power against his former ally turned bitter rival, General Mohamed Hamdan Degalo, the commander of the nation's feared paramilitary force known as the Rapid Support Forces. Hundreds of diplomats, including American, were evacuated over the weekend in daring, high-risk rescue missions. But an estimated 16,000 U.S. nationals remain trapped as the fighting only gets worse. I don't have any plans or announcements to make about the United States deploying peacekeepers to Sudan to putting American boots on the ground to try to keep the peace in Sudan. That is not presently in contemplation. I don't expect it will be. U.S. citizens in Sudan have been told the State Department will provide them with guidance on land routes out of the country and that they'll receive assistance to leave the region once they reach those designated areas. But that, of course, is little comfort to those unable to embark on what would be an extremely risky journey, all in the hopes of trying to reach safety. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Teens forced to trade prom dresses and tuxedos for hospital gowns after nine were shot at a prom night after party. It was supposed to be the most wonderful night of these kids' lives. Um, greatly affected them. 
and it'll be something they never forget and you know unfortunately not in a positive way the victims ages 15 to 19 are all expected to survive the sheriff says officials say three remain hospitalized investigators say around 250 teens were at a saturday night party in jasper texas when chaos erupted i seen the pop it makes a bright light and i seen it popped and i fell jasper high school senior madeline collins hit the floor as gunshots rang out then she heard the cries of her cousin she was on the ground with a gunshot wound and all I could hear was her screaming my name and saying, Maddie, please help, help, help. No arrests have been made, but police are interviewing persons of interest. They say cars seen at the party were involved in a shooting later that night and the two incidents may be connected. This just the latest incident of bullets shattering the innocence of a high school rite of passage. A new poll out today finds nearly half of young Americans have felt unsafe in the past month and 40 percent worry they'll be a victim of gun violence. Oh, my God. The violence in Texas erupted exactly one week after a shooting at a Sweet 16 birthday party in Alabama left four dead and dozens injured. Six people have now been arrested and charged with reckless murder. Today, the birthday girl's brother, 18-year-old Philstavius Dowdell, was laid to rest. His sister and mother still grappling with their loss. Why would they come there to a uh, uh, sweet 16 and run her a party and get her memories around her birthday that we will never forget? Her birthday was on the 14th and Phil got killed on the 15th. That's going to be very hard. Back in Texas, some teens nearly caught in the crossfire. I'm lucky. I'm like really lucky. And the people who got shot but still is alive is very lucky. Our look at America's crime crisis focuses on the nation's capital tonight. The Washington police force is facing its worst staffing shortage in a half century. Homicides and other crimes are on the rise here. Lucas Tomlinson shows us tonight. The numbers tell the story. A crime spike in the nation's capital has many residents afraid. Can't even walk up and down the street without fearing for your life. Officials say fewer cops on the street has led to the crime uptick. The head of D.C.'s police union explained one reason why. Beginning in 2020, we've lost almost 1,200 police officers. And 45% of those that have left have resigned, literally just turned in their badge and walked away. It's almost impossible to hire people. The D.C. police force is now the smallest in 50 years. Officers are leaving faster than they can be replaced. D.C.'s police chief says he could lose 200 more by the end of the year. This as the district's crime numbers are increasing. Homicide is up 27 percent. Sex abuse up 47 percent. Motor vehicle theft has more than doubled. Total crime is up 25 percent compared to this time last year. The rise in killings comes on top of last year's highs, something the city has not seen in 20 years. Last year, federal prosecutors in D.C.'s U.S. Attorney's Office chose not to prosecute 67 percent of those arrested for crimes that would have been tried in D.C. Superior Court. Virginia's attorney general says that's part of the problem. Well, you can't solve a problem unless you first acknowledge there is a problem. And our earnest hope is that Washington, D.C. gets away for some of this criminal first victim last policies that have really led to a violent crime increase inside the district. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. And hunt underway after someone hurled a large rock through a car's windshield in Colorado, killing a 20-year-old woman. There were several similar incidents last night. Mola Lange is on the scene in Denver. Good morning, Mola. Well, good morning, George. Still no arrests and no suspects, according to police here in Colorado, after at least five rock-throwing incidents last week, one of which was deadly. This morning, four Colorado police departments are trying to find out who's behind a dangerous rock-throwing spree targeting multiple victims and killing 20-year-old Alexa Bartell. 
Authorities say Bartel's car veered off the road after a large rock was hurled at her windshield. The incident that we are investigating is, in fact, a homicide. She had been on the phone with a friend driving home when the phone suddenly fell silent. That same friend used an app to locate Bartel, who was dead in her car. The incident is one of five where rocks were thrown at car windows this past Wednesday. Officials putting out a map and timeline showing the incidents happening within 45 minutes. Police now searching for suspects. Whoever this is, throwing large rocks at moving vehicles isn't fun. It literally took this young woman's life. Tense moments at Montana's state capitol, police in riot gear entering the House chamber, forcibly removing protesters, arresting seven of them. <laughs> Chaos erupted after Republican leaders prevented Democrat Zoe Zephyr from speaking for a third day due to her remarks about gender-affirming medical care. Zephyr, the first openly trans woman in Montana's legislature, has not been allowed to speak on the House floor since last week when she slammed a proposed ban on gender-affirming care in the state, saying it would lead to suicides. And she said this to Republicans. I hope the next time there's an invocation, when you bow your heads in prayer, you see the blood on your hands. Republicans condemn that language as inappropriate and disrespectful. They're demanding an apology. No representative is above our House rules. Our House rules apply to all. But Zephyr tells ABC's Start Here podcast she won't apologize. I chose my words with precision and I spoke with clarity because I see the real harm that these bills bring. I won't be apologizing for my remarks. After the chaos, Zephyr addressed her supporters outside the Capitol. She's been silenced because she spoke the truth about what these anti-trans bills are doing in Montana, to trans youth especially. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8-11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. 
All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.